Greetings, humans of Earth. This is 14th of March, 2024. This is Mark's Notcast. Uh, about twice a week, I talk about something that interests me and doesn't generally interest a huge amount of other people. This is no exception. Number 367. I am going to be ranking The Cure albums uh, by a famous pop group, The Cures. And I'm talking through... Uh, three sets of releases, so compilations, live stuff and albums, and then going to rank them in reverse order because everybody loves a ranking. Uh, I've also been a participant on the Steve Hoffman forums. Hi, guys. And um, they've reached the end of the Cure song by song thread. And I thought best to talk through my rankings because I could really. Uh, and it's pretty strange because I've done lots and lots of ones where I've talked about bands and I've talked about albums, but I've, I've not generally done very many rankings. So I've got a number of rankings to come up soon. But first off, The Cure. So, I'm going to talk about the albums in reverse order and how I, so my criteria are if it was released as an album and sold as an album, generally it's an album. This also will include um, dominant live films and concert films from the time, whether they're released on CD, LP, VHS, Laserdisc or whatever, uh, with the exception of Live in Japan because it was only released in Japan. And only released, I think, on Betamax in 1984, and I don't have it. So um, we can take that as read that that one's the lowest one on the list. So let's go with the compilations and see how we go. I will, of course, also be matching this up with the order that we do have uh, ranked on the Steve Hoffman thingy. So compilation albums, here we go. So my least favourite Cure compilation is Greatest Hits from 2001. Primarily because it's a contractual necessity, I think, and contractual obligation. I don't have any affection for it whatsoever. It's got two new songs on it. Cut here and just say yes. Both are thoroughly okay and absolutely serviceable. This is the picture disc edition from around about 2017, Record Store Day. Oh, I hate the Record Store Day. Uh, primarily because I don't think the concept of it works particularly well, but that's the subject for yet another boring internet rant another time. Uh, Greatest Hits also came with a second album, Acoustic Hits, uh, which was the band then supplemented by Boris Williams back on drums again, uh, playing the hit singles in an acoustic format, largely to make the release less obviously exploitative. And here is the uh, RSD picture disc of Acoustic Hits from again from about 2017 or so. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, 2017. And <clears throat> again, I, d I didn't see much much interest in this, really. I don't generally like it when bands re-record material, do acoustic albums or anything like that, because to me it feels like the well has gone dry. Uh, but I think uh, Acoustic Hits was a way of releasing the band from their fiction contract after Chris Parry had sold uh, the label to somebody else and that's an interesting position to be in i think it's fair to say so acoustic hits is okay it's completely unnecessary if you like and love the cure you absolutely don't need it at all and then on the singles front probably my uh or my compilation front is galore and the uh, second greatest hits album uh featuring all the singles from 1987 to 1997 galore is perfectly serviceable as a chronological romp through the seven inch single A sides of the cure. Although obviously it trans trans it crossed the period where the seven inch single became replaced by the C D single. So there are some of them which were no seven inch versions were released. That's not really the point. There's some magnificent stuff on here, but it's not my favourite cure compilation or hits compilation at all. But if you are going to have this, you also do need to have Standing on a Beach, the singles. Uh, and these two together would make a magnificent double album. So if you think of these two together, probably the best compilation. Uh, but uh, if you think of them as separate, this is, this is uh, number three on my list of five compilations from The Cure. This is number two. Uh, I've got the vinyl edition here, but also the CD edition is probably better. This features most of the singles from 1979 to 1985. So starting with Killing an Arab making its LP debut in the UK, I believe, uh, all the way through to the remix and re-recording of Close to Me in 1985. It is one of the best hits albums ever, full stop, by anybody, ever, anywhere. Absolutely magnificent. Uh, you just think of the songs that are on this. Boys Don't Cry, Killing an Arab, Jumping Someone Else's Train, A Forest, Primary, Charlotte Sometimes, Let's Get a Bed, The Walk, Love Cats, Caterpillar in Between Days, 
close to me and the hanging garden all killer no filler baby one of the best uh, certainly my, my preferred cure hits compilation but not of course the best cure compilation that there is the best cure compilation that there is is this absolutely essential box set join the dots this is four cds available probably these days for around about 15 pounds of cure non-album tracks curios remixes studio stuff effectively this is uh the bonus discs material that will expand and enhance your understanding of the cure studio albums very very good really really worth worth having and think of some of the b-sides that are on here okay do handsome maybe not so great uh lament just one kiss you know the um what have we else have we got a few hours after this that's brilliant love it uh too late fear of ghosts to the sky all brilliant songs so absolutely great and if you have all the standard studio albums and you only need one cure compilation this is the one to get absolutely get this um and uh and standing on a beach and uh, you're, you're doing pretty well because if you don't do that then you're missing what three songs and that's okay you won't be crying into your beer or tea about that live albums let's go in order about live albums and live releases bottom of the pile for me concert the cure live this is shit sorry guys i know some of you really really like it i don't um it is a ramshackle and rough set of recordings from the last week of the uk leg of the 1984 top tour with Andy Anderson on drums and Phil Fornelli on bass. And um, I don't think Andy is a great drummer for The Cure. He's a really good drummer. Sorry, was a really good drummer, but wasn't my favourite Cure drummer at all. And um, it was a bit boxy, a bit rocky, a bit trad, a bit standard in terms of how he approached the material. So I don't like the drumming on this album. The other thing I don't like about it is that it's really sloppily edited. So there's no attempt to cross mix the tracks between different shows different venues different performances or gaps it's very abrupt and it sounds like someone's just lifting the needle up and popping it back onto the one song further on it feels like an, a heavily abridged and butchered tv edit of a cure show from 1984 so not recommended although what that does mean is my next recommendation i don't have which is the cures live in japan 1984 vhs but i'm sure we can all live with that so Cure's on treat, which I think I'll, I'll put probably about four on my list of live releases, maybe maybe five. Uh, on treat plus, there is the double album that features the Disintegration album played live in full at London Wembley Arena in 1989. Those shows clearly sound fantastic, and a full release of those shows with all the extra material would shoot right up to the top of the treat. But that is not this album. This is just the Disintegration album played live in full and in order. In Wembley now disintegration is brilliant and I don't want to spoil where it sits in my ranking but Andre plus is not my favorite cure live record and then on the other cure live releases we'll go with 2005's festival uh, this is a DVD effectively a live album with pictures this features the nascent cure uh, quartet featuring Paul Thompson back in the fold but the sound and video quality, again, is pretty rough and pretty raw and hasn't really been overdubbed, fixed or anything. And the visuals are pretty basic. So it's a good live show. The performances are solid and good and really interesting. And it's great to see a new lineup of the band being born in, in public here. But it's not a fantastic uh, full 40 camera, 5-1 amazing experience. It just absolutely isn't. Um, so And the performances are good. Right, three on my list um is actually it's four uh, four on my list is best of all live 2011 i don't like this uh i really don't and it's because the drum sound is terrible on it it's it's quick easy dirtily produced i mean um cure live material has to be I think properly mixed and prepared this feels like a direct straight from the board feed run of whatever it is that happened on that particular night and it's not great so there you go um so we've got concert i think is at seven live in japan is six entree plus is five uh best of all will be four hang on so that puts us at number three number three is the cure trilogy live in berlin 2002 Live performances of the albums 
pornography, disintegration and blood flowers in order, in sequence by the band's then lineup uh, at uh, Berlin. This is epic, but it's miserable. Um, well sharp, well mixed, sounds and looks magnificent. Not amazing, sorry. Number three is, and this is where I put two live albums together in one, uh, and that is Show, uh, which is from 1992, and Paris, which is bonus tracks from the 1992 tour recorded live in Paris. The audio versions of these are um, get marked down primarily because Show is missing the five encore tracks that are on the VHS, VCD and Laserdisc of Show. Here it is, the VHS tape, which I bought in 1993. Um, uh, so that's why that gets marked down, even though the rest of the performance is absolutely splendid. Paris gets marked down on the grounds that, again, it is only the rare songs that they played over three shows in Paris. And it doesn't sound like a gig. It doesn't feel like a gig. It feels like a compilation of random live tracks, which, of course, is exactly what it is. So number one on my list. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. Uh, number one on my list is, of course, The Cure in Orange. But... Uh, I am going to also say that if you are a, a fan of unofficial releases, I would strongly recommend getting this, the Kilburn National 1992 radio broadcast by the band, which is a full 1992 show on the last tour, uh, which features both Paul and Boris in the group. Really, really good show. This really good show. Uh, number one, but not actually the best live release, is The Cure in Orange. The life changing, absolutely fantastic first theatrical release by The Cure of them performing live, also on this bootleg here, uh, recorded at the Orange Amphitheatre in France in 1986, featuring the probably the, certainly the best lineup the band had at, up to that point in time, featuring uh, Simon, Robert, Lowell on keyboards, Boris, and Paul, uh, really lifting the band up into an extra gear. Absolutely magnificent release live in Orange. Bafflingly not on DVD or Blu-ray, but there you are. Now, this release, um, my favourite of the Cure live releases, actually, not number one, number zero, is the Cure's anniversary and from there to here box set. Um, on on the on three three grounds. Firstly, this is the most comprehensive Cure release. This is two full live shows, without with not a nip or a tuck anywhere in sight. No songs are missing, removed or deleted. Secondly, the picture quality and the, and the audio quality is absolutely magnificent. It is the best Cure live release that I have. And um, it, it just sounds great. It features the most recent live release from 2018. So songs from near enough every period of the band's career. Uh, I think every album gets represented on this release, as well as two previously unreleased songs, Step Into The Light and It Can Never Be The Same. And that is why this doesn't really count as a live release and doesn't count as a studio release. It counts as something else. And I don't quite know what category it is. It looks and sounds marvellous. The other thing about it uh, is that I was present at both shows. So I was present at the Meltdown Festival at the Royal Festival Hall in 2018 and also at Hyde Park on the 7th of July 2018. Both of those shows were very, very, very enjoyable indeed for completely different reasons. Um, and I really, really rate this as a live release. So yes, in my mind, this is better than Cure in Orange, which probably makes me a heretic that needs to be burnt at the stake or maybe at the Wicker Man. Who knows? Right. Studio releases. Let's get bitching because some of them, they ain't great, are they? Um, my least favourite of the studio releases is 2018's Torn Down remix album. And the reason that is my least favourite out of the uh, one, two, three, 15 that I'm going to be entering through over the next however long it is 15 or 16, 17 maybe the reason this is bottom of the pile is because it's pretty ropey um, it's Robert Smith remixing one track from every one of The Cure's albums in sequence and they don't sound good uh, they don't add anything to the songs, they don't change any of the songs it, it feels like some guy with a Porter studio that's mucking about in 2002, stripping out the vocals from his favourite songs and then sticking them to upload on you know blogs, calling them crazy remix titles. It's just not very inspiring um, and I don't like it at all. I don't think the remixes do anything interesting to the songs at all. The next one, which I'm going to call number 16, uh, 1990s mixed up 
remix album. This again is much better than Torn Down, but a punch in the face is better than a kick in the balls, isn't it? Um, the remixes on this are generally pretty good. They are mostly contemporary. Um, so the contemporary remixes are from 1987 and 1989. The earlier remixes, songs like Caterpillar, In Between Days uh, and so on, are remixed by then contemporary remixers. And it's OK. Again, they're pretty good. Some of those 12 inch mixes are absolutely fantastic. So Fascination Street, for example, has an extra, I think, keyboard line that's not on the standard LP mix. Uh, Lullaby has a different drum track. Really interesting reinterpretations of the original song. So, yes, huge fan of Mixed Up has a remix album, one of the best remix albums that there is. Um, but again, probably about number 16 on my list of Cure albums because not not a huge fan of it. Hammer into the, uh, and it, it was, we're still on the remixes and compilation sections, Happily Ever After, which most of you have probably never heard of. A double album repackage of 17 seconds and faith inside one sleeve that was only released in America. And it has no artistic reason to exist. And it doesn't sound amazing either. It's okay, um, but it's not essential at all. Uh, Right, the worst of The Cure's full-blown 100% studio albums, 2004's The Cure. Isn't it odd, when bands release albums that are generally named after the band, they go, ah, oh, this is the best album we've made. This is the one that really encapsulates who we are, and that's why we've called it The Cure, or why we've called it Metallica, or The Cult. If you have an album that's named after your band and it's not your debut album, it stands a really good chance of being shit. Sorry. I don't make the rules. That's how it is. If it's your debut and your Iron Maiden, for example, sure, that's going to be a great album. By the way, I'm going to start talking about Iron Maiden at some point soon. But if it's The Cure and you're only like your 11th, 12th album or something and you're going to mention it, no, uh, it's not good at all. It's not good for three reasons. Firstly, the songs aren't there. Some of the songs are awful. Never in particular is really fucking bad. Um, and I think some of the other songs... Uh, Labyrinth is not great um, The Promise is not great uh, I don't know what's going on Is a bit oh. The production is awful Apparently whoever the producer was Some new metal wanker called Ross Robinson I think it was uh, Would do things like Interfere with the band members While they're playing to make them more angry And I'm like really that's childish bollocks And stop it you absolute nincompoop So Yes, The Cure is my least favourite of the band's studio albums. It was also, and I saw a show on the tour in Manchester, the only UK show, and it was the most boring Cure show I have ever seen. I, I was texting with my mate Alan, who was at the back of the crowd, and I was going, this is boring, and he was like, it is. So much so that during the encore, I went over and sat at the back on the, the seats, uh, and I was like, just watch the band. And I was like, I am not invested in this show at all, which is odd because I travelled all the way from London to Manchester to see it. And it's quite a disappointment to go that far and to go, this isn't very good, is it? Right. The uh, I think probably let's guess where this is. I don't know. The top. Uh, again, I don't like this album. I know lots of people like this album. I don't like this album because drugs are bad. OK, kids? And Robert had taken a lot of bloody drugs when he made this. I mean, some drugs, paracetamol, ibuprofen, they're really nice. Some of the drugs on here, LSD, magic mushrooms, God knows what else. Maybe, I don't know, some kind of diluted snake venom cut with chocolate milk. They're awful. And the top is the sound of one man on his own going doolally whilst trying to be in three bands at the same time, writing a song every single day, never sleeping and going slowly fucking bonkers. It's Re we really, really, really incoherent. The quality bar is really strange. So it's got some good songs on it. Shake Dog Shake's quite good. I like Bird Mad Girl. Caterpillar is pretty ace. Everything else, ooh, dressing up's all right. Four good songs out of an LP. Don't cut it, though, does it? So uh, let's think. What else is on here? Wailing Wall, Give Me It, Piggy in the Mirror, Empty World, Banana Fish Bones and The Top. Not exactly a fun frolic in the sunshine, although, of course, the best Cure albums are exactly the opposite of fun frolics in the sunshine, as we all know. So, the top. I don't like it. It's got six bad songs on it. And sorry, I I know I should like it more, but I don't. I don't like it. There's nothing I can do about that. I think it's just... It's 
two or three good singles and a bunch of really ropey b-sides so the top is an album that shouldn't really uh, exist right slim pickings if you're a fan of modern day cure 413 dream again the songs aren't quite there there's some good songs on here i like underneath the stars i like the only one i think freak show is quite fun siren song is okay um sleep when i'm dead is all right it's over it's really really good but then some of the other material such as switch the perfect boy uh the scream no 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 not good songs at all no absolutely not uh, i mean I, I always remember what brian ferry said about well there's only so many songs about swimming pools and fast cars and dating supermodels um that i can write and for the the cures 413 dream it, it's songs that don't have the focus and the compulsion of having something to say and saying them it's more a kind of well i've got to write songs that's what i do let's write some songs and uh, i think underneath the stars is is a kind of like a, a version of a song that was originally written maybe a decade previously so uh, revisited some of the other ones not so great and for god's sake paul step off that wah wah pedal i know you're really really good at it but not every song needs to go wah, 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 all the time honestly dude it doesn't okay it absolutely doesn't next one and we're going way 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 back now we go to two albums that i regard as one album so three imaginary boys and boys don't cry three imaginary boys isn't very long it's about 34 minutes long and it doesn't have a number of key songs from the band's discography in there so for example it doesn't have killing an arab it doesn't have boys don't cry it doesn't have jumping somebody else's train on there uh, and those three or three songs are songs that i think would be um the cures history in that period it is absolutely incomplete without those three songs uh, it absolutely is um luckily those songs are on boys don't cry alongside the b-sides plastic passion and uh something else i guess as well as the previously unreleased an absolutely risible outtake world war oh that's not good is it uh, world war is not great so three imaginary boys really good interesting post-punk debut very promising i wish it had a couple more songs on it and then the album would be much much higher in the list imagine for example if you listen to uh let's say something like disintegration and it didn't have lullaby and fascination street on it and you kind of go feels like it's missing something that's exactly the feeling i get when i listen to three imaginary boys uh, it's a good album really good album great debut but i don't like the final configuration of the tracks right this one doesn't officially exist anymore as an album japanese whispers the 1983 qs studio album which is actually a compilation of three singles a's and b-sides so it's got the walk love cats let's go the bears on it it's also got lament which is magnificent lovely song absolutely love it to bits uh it's got just one kiss which is really good it's got the dream i mean it's got some very very good songs on uh, but it's only eight songs long so it's not very good and it wasn't really ever meant to be an album ever so i guess we're just gonna have to live with that right okay haters you're gonna hate this one um next up on my ranking is pornography okay this is a really great record okay haters pornography it's a really great record but it's not a good record it's not a fun record it's not an easy record it's essential but uneasy to listen to it's pretty hostile actually to the listener it's got some very bleak difficult obtuse songs it captures a very specific mood of miserable defiance uh a kind of mood which actually has best been captured elsewhere on uh, no one can ever know by the twilight sad uh, who i absolutely love in case none of you had worked that out uh so there's a song the short-term effects siamese twins the figurehead cold and pornography those are hard songs to to listen to really bleak oppressive it feels like the walls are closing in on you and if that's the mood that the album's planning to represent it absolutely works but it's bloody hard work it's like watching a very meaningful but depressing oscar movie uh, i'm thinking requiem for a dream or zone of interest so good record not an amazing record or more correctly very good but not quite my thing 
Okay, so some of you are probably going to be asking, well, where's Wild Mood Swings, that album that everybody hates? Well, I'm glad you asked, watchers, not that you were watching or, or asking. It is next. So, yeah, I think this is better than pornography. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, as usual, send your usual comments about hate and how terrible I am and how I'm bold into the comments section where it will get eaten by the algorithm and you will never be read. Um, I think Wild Mood Swings is better than pornography. You probably think I'm barking mad. Um, I really like this record. It still it does have three of the worst songs ever on a Cure LP, and I'm not going to pretend that it doesn't. It has got uh, gone, return, and round and round and round. I hate those songs. They are awful, really bad. Like when somebody suddenly springs a surprise birthday party on you at a funeral. Awful songs. The album would be much, much better without them. But aside from that, I really rate the material on this. Want is a great song. I like Club America. I think This Is A Lie is really good. The 13th, it's good, but it's not really a good Cure song, is it? I think that's probably the bitchiest thing I can say about it. Strange Attraction, I really like, but the drums are pretty dull. If you've ever played the drums to Strange Attraction, you will know how dull that is. Uh, Mint Car, Jupiter Crash, Numb. Trap Treasure and Bear. Those are good songs. So this is probably the cure at their most acoustic, their most mellow. I really like it, actually. It completely failed to hit the world at the time it came out. But that's not that album's problem. That's the rest of the world's problem, isn't it? So where, where are we going next? Well, we're into the final straight now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight albums to go. And uh, the next one. Blood Flowers from 2000. Loads of people love this. Some people really don't. I really struggled with Blood Flowers when it came out. I struggled with it for three reasons. The first one is, at the time it came out, it felt to me like a cynical and insincere attempt to recapture all the fans that have been scared off by Wild Mood Swings. We're going, look, we're still miserable. We're still glum. And then to go, don't worry, we're not going to have any hits because we're not going to release any singles. As opposed to going, well, look, you wouldn't have any hits because the world's moved and changed dramatically since then. And they're like, doesn't matter, we're not having any hits. Total necro, no sellout, like Swedish death metal. Um, but looked at away from the prism of time and the moments that happened then and the memories that I've got around it. I like Blood Flowers. I've mellowed to it a lot over the years. But at the time, it felt like a cynical and unnecessary rehash of Disintegration B-Sides. And I've, I've warmed to it a lot over time. It has some fabulous songs in it. So Last Day of Summer, uh, Maybe Someday, Where the Birds Always Sing, 39, Blood Flowers. These are really good Cure songs. It just, it didn't work for me at the time it came out. It came out the week I had the, the worst breakup I've ever had. Um, and... I just was not in the mood to sit around feeling sorry for myself at that point. I was in the mood to pick myself up, dust myself down and to rise like a phoenix from the flames. She thought that she'd buried me. She planted a seed. Not my fault. I stole it from somebody. Probably an inspirational poster. But there you are. So uh, into the final few. Now, uh, my next one in my, my order is Faith. Love this album. Really good, really, really good, excellent. Uh, it's got that kind of it carries this wonderful air of despondent minimalism. Um, kind of like when you've got the I, I, I have a theory that there's a particularly popular British genre of knackered commuter rock, so old ish people who are just tired and want the world to back off and be quiet and get off its lawn. And I think that's part of where faith sits, actually, is that there's that sense of exhaustion at reality and reality being subpar and unsatisfactory uh, it's got an absolutely spellbinding set of songs and each one of the songs is in the perfect place to sit next to the song that both precedes it and follows it in a way that creates almost like a symphony of misery it's got the holy hour on it primary other voices oh i love that all cats are gray the Funeral Party, Doubt, The Drowning Man and Faith. These are great, great songs. This is, um, I mean, certainly up to this point in the band's discography, this is the sign of a band that's really stepping into and becoming just as good as anybody else. Sometimes you listen to a band and you can see them 
evolving and maturing into themselves over time and, and then you kind of go this band are going to be great and you can see it faith is the album for me where i was like okay this isn't a fluke this isn't a one-off this band are solid and they're going to be solid for a very very long period of time and i love them to this day right so we're into the final six and number six on my list uh is uh, are you going what's number five surely they haven't got you've mentioned all but four of the albums oh yeah i have don't worry but that's coming up next 17 seconds 17 seconds is number six on my list um I, again it, it's got a slightly knackered air of, of of exhausted despondency i absolutely connect to this album i love it i enjoy its sense of mystery its sense of um uncertainty about everything uh, it's got some of the best cure songs on it so a reflection and play for today and a forest and m and a, i love them all there's not one bad song on this album even the title track 17 seconds which sounds like being buried in slow motion is wonderful in its despair it, it's it's like watching snow drown the world um that, that song so this is number six on my list but there's only four Cure, Cure albums left to go. And that means that number five is going to be the one that bucks the trend. Because this is going to be the album that isn't a Cure album. Oh my God. The Glove. Blue Sunshine. This is uh, Robert Smith, Andy Anderson, Paul Thompson and Steve Severin. Although I think only uh, Robert and um, Steve play on the record. This is the solo project uh, by... Robert Smith in his mad drug fueled years when he was also a member of Sibsy of the Banshees as well as The Cure, playing live, touring with two bands, releasing three albums in 18 months and the live record as well. So in that period, he released Japanese Whispers, Nocturne by the Sibsy and the Banshees, recorded Hyena, also released The Top and, um, and Blue Sunshine. It was a crazy period of prolific bonkers nutness. And this is the most bonkers nutty one of the lot. Uh, I said between this and the top, you could create an absolutely fantastic Cure album. But this is an absolutely fantastic Cure adjacent album. It's just brilliant. It's got, I, I, it's got like an animal and uh, punish me with kisses. Mister Alphabet says, perfect murder, um, sex eye makeup. These are all really strange, unusual songs. Like someone has taken a boatload of Sid Barrett and fed it through a blender of of psychedelia. And uh, the glove being named after the, the glove, the blue glove that's in, I think, the Yellow Submarine movie. Um, if you love The Cure and you're like, oh, I wish they'd made some good solo albums. This is it. It's divisive. It's got a female vocalist whose, whose vocals aren't always to everyone's taste. But I really like them. And it's got Robert singing on a few songs. And the expanded version of it has Robert Smith vocal demos, which may have been recorded. 2005 2004 something like that's part of the preparation for this but it's got robert smith vocals on almost every track on the on the expanded deluxe version so do do listen to it four albums and you know which four albums are coming up because you probably have them all um number four head on the door from 1985 um i think this is a photograph of Robert's sister that's been treated and blended and stuff like that and shook the camera about. Uh, this is the first album out of four made by the uh, the Holy Quartet of Robert, Simon, Paul and Boris with various keyboard players, uh, respectively, Lol Tolhurst, Roger O'Donnell and Perry Bavont. Um This is, I, I think, um, the album where you could see that The Cure had suddenly moved from being uh, a Range Rover to being a Ferrari. There was nothing they couldn't do. Um, adding Paul and Boris into the band gave them a level of dexterity and agility that meant the songs could take the great leap forward. We have some fantastic, phenomenal drumming on all of Boris's appearances on songs like Push, In Between Days, those, those distinctive drum intros that you would have on songs like Just Like Heaven, for example, Why Can't I Be You, things like that. And it just really just hangs together. Um, there's a couple of songs on this I'm not vastly keen on. I think Screw is pretty poor. I think The Baby Screams is difficult. Um, but the songs were written by Smith on their own and then turned into Cure songs by the remaining members of the band. Um, and I, I, it's got obviously it's got In Between Days on, it's got Close to Me on, it's got A Night Like This, it's got Push. Those are four classics that sit in the band's 
set list to this day, and rightly so, because they are amongst the finest songs ever written by any humans anywhere. Number three on my list, and oh, this means you can tell what number two and what number one are. Number three, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, um, the double album from 1987, the first album where the band members brought in their own demos and presented them to everybody else and then created this weird small gas board of different musical styles, ranging from fucked up jazz to, to crazy bonkers post-punk. It's got everything on it. Uh, it's got doomy, gloomy, heavy soundscapes. Uh, it's got lush, atmospheric miserableism. It's got pop. It's got a little bit of jazz. It's got some strange and unusual... Um, not western tuned stuff like if only tonight we could sleep and like cockatoos it's all great it's really good and uh obviously any album that has catch why can't i be you just like heaven hot 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 how beautiful you are and the perfect girl on and a thousand hours and one more time actually it's all good isn't it apart from mm, not a huge fan of the snake pit i'll put it that way uh, that always bored me when they played it live the snake pit uh but i can live with that Really, really great record, um, and uh, you know, bold, brave, and ambitious. This is the version, by the way, that comes with an orange vinyl 12 inch of six extra songs, B sides, and a remix of Icing Sugar. Uh, but you don't need to concern yourself with those songs, those songs are on the Join the Dots compilation. Two albums, two albums left to go, people. Wish is number two. Uh, I, this is the album that I think is my favorite Cure album. It is not the best Cure album, but it is my favourite Cure album. Um, Wish is my favourite because it's the album that I had, the, the, the first Cure album that I experienced in real time in the way of being able to go and see the band. Because when Disintegration came out, I was 15. I wasn't able to see the band play live. When Wish came out, I was, and I saw them twice on the subsequent live shows in 1992 and 1993. So I was able to feel like a, a real participant fan of the group as opposed to somebody that bought the records and hadn't yet had the experience of sitting in the room with them so my memories of wish come combined with the live shows at nottingham rock city and in london as well this has some great songs on it although this is the first cure album where i think you can hear the influence of other people as opposed to the cure influencing other people so you can hear the wall of sound guitars uh, that are borrowed off things like chapter house slow dive cocteau twins uh, ride those type of things in songs like from the edge of the deep green sea cut for example um bits of a letter to elise bits of open i i think it's great it's really underrated record it has high on it it has friday i'm in love a, a letter to elise trust to wish impossible things which uh, by the way i saw the first time to wish impossible things was played live um it's got end on it. It's it's a very, very good album. Very good. Maybe a step down from its predecessor. Uh, but I, I I think very, very, very highly of it indeed. I love it to bits. Um, yeah, just really great record. And that's my number two. Number one, that's not going to be a surprise. Everyone is going to agree with me because this is the only good album that any anybody ever made, if you listen to some people. That album, Disintegration. Um, not my favourite, but I think the best is the most consistent. There's not a duffer on it at all. There's not one song that I, I listen to and go, mm, oh, not great. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, it's got plain song on it and pictures of you. I've got to be really careful not to just read off the back of the CD. Have not got closed down uh, love song. You know, these these are brilliant little songs and big songs, songs about miserableism and, and even touched in with a vague air of optimism. Very, very good songs. Um, these are songs which are almost all in the band's set list to this day. Um, I've seen all but mm, three songs off the album. I haven't seen Untitled. I haven't seen Homesick uh, because I haven't played them for a long time. And I haven't seen The Same Deep Water as you because I've always missed it by a day. They always played it the show before I got to see them or the show after on a tour. So aside from that, you know, these are all songs that are greeted like long lost friends. They sound comforting. They sound beautiful. They sound like you have encountered a friend that you haven't seen for a long time. And they're giving you a lovely soft hug and embrace that tells you that everything is going to be all right, that you're not alone anymore, that the things in this life that perhaps are difficult are the things that other people find difficult. You are not on your own. And that's a really lovely feeling. 
in this record. It's like Prozac, actually, in so much as if I listen to it and I'm miserable, I'm not so miserable anymore. If I listen to it and I'm happy, OK, I'm not so happy anymore. But it stabilises the moods. It brings it down to a centre post where, where feelings kind of overlap. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a real friend, this album. I listen to it a lot. I listen to it very, very frequently. I know it so well that I don't think I ever have to listen to it ever again, actually. Uh, this is probably the best Cure album. It's not my favourite because uh, Wish is my favourite, but it is the best. And I guess that's where we go. So let's quickly go through the rankings uh, on the Hoffman forums, which have as the uh, the albums, The Cure. Yep, yeah, that's about right. 413 Dream. I like that perhaps a little bit more than the most people. Um, Wild Mood Swings, again, I like that more than most people. Three Imaginary Boys, somewhere near the bottom. The Top, somewhere near the bottom. That's at number nine. Blood Flowers is at eight. Wish is at seven. What are you thinking, guys? Pornography is at six. 17 Seconds is five. Faith is four. Kiss Me, Kiss Me is three. Head on the Door is two. And Disintegration is number one. Which means I'm not a weird, crazy snob. I, uh, I um, am roughly in line with where lots and lots of people are. So... Oof, that's a big race, isn't it? I can't remember what order I've gone in now. So um, there we have it. But what a, a fabulous list. What a magnificent discography The Cure have. And I suspect when I do a ranking in future, I will be a little bit more organised in case you've been watching this and going, well, what's the well I'll be more organised next time round. But thank you for watching it to this point. Um, I am a little poorly at the moment. I have acute sense sinusitis which is something i've never had before uh, and i'm currently on a boatload of drugs i can't pronounce to solve it hopefully it hasn't been apparent all the way through i've yet to experience the glory of morphine uh unlike stogs but there are other people um and there are other other drugs which i've got which are going through me i'm rattling i've got more pills in me than a friday night in uh, manchester in 1989 and uh, hopefully it's not really really apparent when i talk so Thank you for this. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. Stay beautiful, beautiful ones. Um, and I will see you soon. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't, don't subscribe. That's cool too. Um, there are many, many uh, YouTube channels of which I am just one in a sea of thousands. And uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, watch somebody else. Okay. See you later, gang. Bye.